Happy New Year, YouTube. Hope everybody's doing great. Enjoying 2019 so far. Hope it's treating you well. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, it's already over. But if you're in West Coast, it's still New Comic Day. Happy New Comic Day. And it's a comic day I've been looking forward to for a little while because it's the return of Conan the Barbarian to Marvel Comics. You saw the shirt I was wearing. Big Conan fan, so I'm excited to see what Marvel does. Uh, more so for Savage Sword coming in February than the, the monthly book right now. Savage Sword will be a mature title. But a uh, good writer and creative team on this book, so we'll see what happens with it. I haven't read it yet. I'm excited to do so when this is over. I probably will, and I'll give it a review. Uh, probably, maybe even do a review video later this week. But this is just going to be a real quick uh, new comic book haul for the last two weeks. And... Uh, Another video I wanted to do but didn't get a chance to, I'm going to, sh I'm going to show you the, the top 10 books I purchased during 2018, in my opinion. Unfortunately, I've been playing around with this for 10 minutes. There's no way I can show these with my setup without getting glare on them. I had them in Mylar, I took them out of Mylar, but the CGC case is just, just, the lighting in here is not good, so I apologize in advance. You'll get to see them as best as I can show them. That's all I can do right now. So anyway, we'll get right to it. I want to make this a long video. Uh, first, the new books I picked up this week. As I just mentioned, the first book is Conan the Barbarian. This is written by Jason Aaron. And this book had a whole lot of different covers. I like this one of the cover price variants. This was my favorite. So, Looking forward to reading that. Second book I picked up uh, not a lot of good reading in Marvel right now, in my opinion, but one of the few books that has been consistently solid is Immortal Hulk. This is the regular cover, Immortal Hulk number 11. Alex Ross, he's been killing it with these covers, and the story's been great. If you're not reading that, I recommend it. Another book uh, I recommend, everybody's reading Donny Cates stuff right now for Marvel, but they're not necessarily reading two of his better books, one of which is called Baby Teeth. Aftershock comics, but the one I really like is called uh, Redneck. It's vampire based book and it's for image comics This is issue number 18 If you do read this book, you know what it's been building up to I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but as bad as you thought this issue could be it's worse It's <laughs> it's up there with Saga 54 territory, so be prepared Excellent, but you know beautifully brutal. You love to hate it that kind of thing uh, Next up we have the B cover which is by Jenny Frizen variant cover for Wonder Woman number 61 It's a beautiful cover Most of her covers are um, Then up next we have issue number five of Marvel Knights. This is written by Donny Cates uses a uh, Mostly Daredevil, Black Panther, Punisher, uh, Elektra, a lot of the 90s street level characters, but this is one of the connecting covers when all six are out. We'll put them together and see what they look like, but this one features Ben Grimm and the Sentry. And up next we have Sword Daughter. This is from Dark Horse Comics. Brian Wood writes it. I've enjoyed it so far. This is issue number five. And the last single issue I picked up this week is from DC Comics. This is Scarlet number five by Brian Bendis and Brian Maleev. And I also picked up two trade paperbacks. These are from originally from independent companies and from Marvel Comics, but now they're being printed by DC Comics because they own all things Bendis now. So this is the Jinx trade paperback. Just want to hit Bendis earlier works for Image Comics, and prior to that, you've had Goldfish, also by Brian Bendis. Picked up that trade paperback. That's it for the new comics I picked up this week. A couple others I looked at, but didn't get them yet. And these are going to be in order from 10 to 1. In my opinion, the top 10 books I picked up this year. Um, there were others, honorable mentions, but this is what I went with. 
So we'll start out with the first one is uh, Tales to Astonish number 98. It's a Jack Kirby cover with Black Panther fighting Captain America. This is a CGC blue label 8.5. I will do my best to show this with as little glare as possible. Eight point five, and it's noted to have cream to off-white pages. Not an expensive book, but a very cool Kirby cover that had been on my list for a while, so I was happy to pick that up. Second book is Wonder Woman number one seventy-seven. This is a CGC nine point two. It's noted to have off-white pages, and it also features Supergirl. Sorry, trying to keep the glare off of this. This is a 9.2. Another book, not super expensive, but it's been on my list for a while. I like the uh, Silver and Bronze Age Supergirl and Batgirl covers. So I kind of pick those up when I can in high grade. Uh, next up we have All-Star Comics number 58. This is a CGC 9.0 with white pages. It's the first appearance of Power Girl. Maybe you can see her. It's kind of a continuation of All-Star Comics when they brought the... Then JSA was called the All-Star Squad. They brought them back in the 70s, first time since the Golden Age, outside of some JLA appearances. But it's a high grade book. I'd still like to upgrade it a little bit more before inevitably she shows up in TV or movie. Um, nine eights have gotten really pricey, but if I could get a nine four or nine six, I'd like to do that. But if you buy this book in the eight five or better, I still think it's a solid investment. It's got a lot of meat left on the bones. If you're looking for a a reasonable key to invest in that still has room. I think it's a good one to look at. Uh, next we got X-Men number 66. This is a 9.2 with off-white pages. It's the X-Men versus the Hulk and it was also the last issue before they went to reprints and eventually then introduced the new X-Men team which we know now from X-Men 94. This book had been on my list for a very long time. You can find it in VG all day long. It's not too hard to find and find, but try and find this book in VF or better, and especially over nine. It's not easy to do. So we got glare, <laughs> nine point two. Hulk. Big fan of the Hulk battle issues from the Silver Age. Pick them up quite frequently. Uh, next, one of my favorite Silver Age Jack Kirby covers. This is uh, another book that's been on my list for a long time. I owned it previously, but never in this high a grade. This is Sergeant Fury number 13. Uh, it's a crossover with Captain America. It's noted to have cream to off-white pages. And it's just an awesome Jack Kirby cover. CGC 8.0. Good stuff. Great cover. And up next we have, sticking with Sergeant Fury, this is Sergeant Fury number one. Uh, I've mentioned this a couple times in my other videos, but if you want to own a Marvel Comics number one pre-1963, and uh, you haven't got one yet. Sergeant Fury and Daredevil are really the last two affordable number ones. And uh, I think now is still a good time to buy both books. So anyway, I picked this up this year. I actually got both of those books this year. This is a 4.5 with white pages. It's the first appearance of Nick Fury. Not the movie Nick Fury, Samuel Jackson, but the actual comic book Nick Fury.
prior to losing his eye and getting the eye patch. That's what did he look like? 4.5 white pages. Cool book. Nice to own it. Another one, if I could bump it up to like a six, that would make me happy. But at this point, with these number one books, you can't be picky. If you get a chance to buy one at a reasonable price, you do it. So pick that up. And up next, the other book I mentioned. Uh, this is Daredevil number one. It's a CGC 4.0 with off white pages. Get out of the glare here. Spider Man appearance. Still rocking the yellow costume at this point. So, two Marvel number ones this year. That was pretty cool. Probably the last two I can afford. I've already got the other cheaper ones. I've got Avengers and Iron Man, what have you. But Daredevil and uh, Nick Fury. The other thing that's cool about Nick, Fu uh, not Nick Fury, Sergeant Fury number one and Daredevil one. Their um, books that have, still have first appearances. Like Iron Man number one is not a first appearance. Avengers one is not a first appearance. Obviously X-Men, Fantastic Four are. Spider-Man is not. Hulk is. But uh, there are 1963 books that are affordable that have first appearances. Another reason they're doubly good to invest in, in my opinion. Uh, up next, I showed this in my last video, but it definitely makes my top ten. This has been on my list forever. I've passed over multiple copies over the years and fine, but uh, I finally picked one up in VF. So this is uh, Daredevil number 7. It's a CGC 8.0 with off-white to white pages. It's the first appearance of Daredevil wearing the red costume. He battles a Submariner. It's a great story. And uh, Wally Wood art. So not much that isn't going for this book. If you want to read it, and can't afford the actual book. They reprinted it in the 70s in Marvel Superheroes. Definitely a good story. I recommend picking up. So this is CGC 8.0. Sorry, the lighting in here is terrible. It's a very cool book. Uh, up next, I got this book just in time. It was the last one of the trilogy I was missing. This is a CGC 8.5 off-white to white pages. Fantastic Four number 49. It's the first cover appearance of Galactus and the Silver Surfer. Second full appearance. Uh, I already had raw copies of 48 and 50. I'd like to upgrade my 48, but my 50 is really nice. Uh, but these books blew up in the past six months. And they're going to continue to do so the closer we get to Marvel actually having the possibility of bringing the Fantastic Four back to the big screen. So, very happy to own this. These are awesome books. Jack Kirby art. Major characters. Even if they weren't doing movies, these are books you should own anyway. Very cool. <clears throat> and if you want to own them and can't afford the actual books, a really cool way to pick them up, if you go back and watch a video I did about a month ago, uh, Marvel released a book, uh, drawing a blank right now what the title was, but it, it's a uh, Galactus oversized hardcover. It reprints Fantastic Four, 48, 49, 50, um, 55 through 58, and the Trial of Galactus, oversized, full color. It's awesome. And it's 50 bucks at retail. You can't buy any one of these books in good for 50 bucks. So to get it all in one shot and oversized and to be able to enjoy that Kirby art, that scale is really cool. If you haven't seen it, go back, check out that video. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, and the last book, um, I only bought two Golden Age books this year. This was one of them. I'd love to get more, but they're just really pricey now. This is a CGC 6.5. Off-White to White Pages, Batman number 38, 1947. It's a Penguin cover. I like the Golden Age Batman villain covers. I try and pick up one or two a year. So I was able to get this one. There's 
see. Penguin. Flying down with his umbrella. Shooting some flames at Batman and Robin. Like I said, it's a CGC 6.5. Cool golden age book happy to add it to my collection anyway that's it guys i hope you enjoyed it uh we'll see what we can come up with this year i made a tentative list maybe i'll reveal it at some point of uh what i hope to pick up this year it's interesting because i don't know if you all know this or not some of you have watched me for a while or know me personally do i'm really big into original comic art and since i've gotten into comic art it makes it a lot higher harder to buy books um, one, because the price point, most of these books I've owned before and I'm buying them again. The uh, second problem is that art is one of a kind. So when a page comes up, if you want it, whether you have to overpay for it or not, you better go for it because the chances of seeing it again are slim to none. You might see a page offered a second time if somebody put it up for the first time ever and someone bought it quick to flip it. But once it's in the hand of a collector, unless that person goes through something catastrophic or gets out of the hobby, it's not changing hands. Um, so when you see art you want, you've got to get it. And uh, buying art has definitely slowed down my comic book buying uh, for financial and just availability reasons. I mean, Hulk 181 is a great book. It's incredibly popular. In my opinion, it's overvalued right now. But if money's no object, you can buy 100 copies of that book today. But try and find a page of art from Hulk 181. You know, they just don't come up for sale. That's just an example. You know, the beauty of art is you can buy art that you like cheap still. Uh, if you character collect or if you go after a specific artist, that can make it more expensive. But it's a great hobby to get into because if you're just a fan of artwork, you can buy some really nice panel pages on the cheap. You, know, you can get a great panel page for 100, 150 bucks. Um, so I recommend exploring it, and I plan to do more videos showcasing some of my art and the artists I like later. But anyway, I've ran on long enough. Happy New Year, everybody. Have a great night, and have a great 2019. I look forward to seeing what you guys pick up and the videos you make. Thanks, as always. A uh, couple quick shout-outs. I should have done this earlier. Uh, check out uh, JLS Comics Thursday night, Comics Conversation. Edwin from Strictly Comics will be there. Boston Chris Comics and uh justin from excel state comics they always have great content a fun show a lively chat uh check out the great legend show he and edwin recently did the hero initiative charity auction which did incredibly incredibly well the community stepped up and we raised some money for a, a very good charity if you watch my last video you can get more details on that um a couple people i noticed running contests comic book specter and um uh, Lindsay's Geeked Out Knickknacks, both running contests right now, so check out their channels, um, sub them up if you haven't done it, and enter their contest, they're giving away some cool stuff, and uh, that's about all I got for now, but thanks for watching, if you like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I will talk to you soon, have a great night.